morning everyone this is Tony from her homestead skills and today I am going to do something that I haven't done in a long time <clears throat> and I'm going to make some lasagna now the reason I don't make lasagna very often is because it is extremely lazy labor-intensive uh, I make uh, homemade pasta and I make homemade sauce from the tomatoes that I can uh, in uh, the fall and so everything is made from scratch, except of course the eggs and cheese. I buy the eggs and I buy the cheese, um, but uh, the sauce is homemade, the pasta is homemade, and everything is cooked independently, and then it is layered and put together. So I'm going to walk through the process. This might take a couple of videos, but I'll start off with how I make the pasta. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've started this process by uh, measuring out five cups of flour. I didn't bother to uh, film that. So five cups of flour is five cups of flour. So what we want to do now is create a little crater in the center of that. And in that we will drop, I guess with five cups of flour, I'm going to uh, use six eggs. And, and normally I wouldn't bother to measure this, but uh, since I'm doing it for the video, I know some people want measurements. Now I'm using large eggs, so six of these. work the flour into the eggs. And scramble that all together. Now, I probably did a little bit more flour, or used a little more flour than I normally would, but if any if I get tired of making lasagna pasta, I can make some linguine and just freeze it. Or should I say, if I made too much? None of it goes to waste. Okay, now we're going to mix in everything else. You want to incorporate the eggs and the flour together. starting to come together. Now you can certainly do this in the mixer. And normally I would, but this is the way I was taught to make this. And I may put it in the mixer just to give it a final meeting. Now, I'm going to continue mixing this all together, but if you find it's a little bit dry, there are a couple of things you can do. You can certainly add another egg. You can add a drop of water, and I've seen people use some olive oil as well. So either one of those will work to help you get a dough mixture that stays together. But I think we're pretty close here anyway. And my uh, 
method would be just to add a bit of water. And yes, I do think we need some. Perfect. It's coming together nicely. Okay. Okay, I've got a cup of water here and I'm going to start off by adding about half a cup. That's not even quite half a cup. <laughs> I probably should use my mixer. Okay. And I think I will. I'll get back to you after I've got all of this in the mixer. Definitely credit to my mother and my grandmother who do this all by hand. I just don't have the same strength they did. Okay, I'm adding the last half cup of water. I'm sure I'm going to need it. So I'm using the kneading paddle as opposed to the um, mixing paddle. So I'm going to knead this until it's nice and firm and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I needed that. I don't think it was even five minutes, but just enough to incorporate everything. It's, uh, we're not making bread, we're making pasta, so. And it is the consistency that I like. It needs to be a bit firm. Uh, so, yes, it's actually perfect like this. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just testing with the uh, dough consistency here by hand kneading for a minute. So, what we're going to do at this point, I'm sorry, I guess I just don't have the camera set up right there. Okay, there we are. As I said, I'm just hand kneading to determine the consistency. And you want it moist but firm. You don't want it too dry. And now what we're going to do is just cover this up and let it sit here for about half an hour. So I've got my dishcloth and it's just going to sit and I guess all the gluten's all work together and in half an hour we'll start working it. Meanwhile, I will bring out the pasta machine and uh, clean up here just a little bit. Okay, so I'm unboxing the pasta maker. And this thing must be <laughs> 30 years old, maybe longer than that. Um, they actually last forever if they're properly looked after. Um, the one thing you do not do is use water on them. They're dusted with flour and a dry cloth. Um, slightly moist, perhaps, but no water. And if you need to get a um, a paintbrush to get at it, that's fine as well. But as you can see, it's like it's like brand new. This thing has been around forever. Now I do have two of them. I did buy a newer one that I found at a, an awesome price. Normally they're about a hundred dollars, and that one was like sixty. And the reason I bought it was because it had the extra holes to allow the attachment of the motors. This one uh, does not, so it will always be a hand crank. So the newer one uh, will allow me to put a motor on it. Interesting enough, they're, they're both fairly heavy. They're both made by the same company, but I find even the newer one is just a tad lighter. Not much, not enough to make it discernible. If I hadn't had this one, I probably wouldn't know that. And. Uh, the weight certainly doesn't hurt with these things. As a matter of fact, the weight is good. So, okay. Unboxing, wiping it down. I'm going to set this up and then we'll cut up the pasta. Okay, another little thing I might want to mention is that uh, 
where I put my pasta machine. Um, there isn't enough table to clamp, so I add this little piece of oak that I had my husband cut up for me so that it uh, will hold it very nicely. Okay, that's clamped on tight enough so that I would move the table rather than, and that's what you want. You want to be able to uh, apply as much pressure as you need. Okay, so now the thing to bear in mind here, actually our dough has sat there. Now, as I was saying, the thing to bear in mind here is that we want to uh, work this dough through the press, the pasta press, a number of times and uh, to get the consistency that we want and the thickness that we want and uh, it, you do need a little bit of space to lay down the sheet so I've got my dining room table all set up with a fresh tablecloth that I can lay this on because I certainly don't have the working space right here Okay, and we'll need our flour. Probably be using a fair bit more flour here as we go along. And what I do is I work uh, each piece through um, a fairly wide setting, probably the most open setting on the press, to start the flattening process. And yes, dusting it with flour as we go along is part of the process. Okay. And it's not strictly running it through once. You fold it over and run it through a few times. But I'm just Yes, the arm does get tired. Seems to be a nice consistency, which is what's important. Now, as you can see, just rolling it out once, we have uh, we need more space already than what we had to begin with. So, dust these with flour again. And now we start to fold them a couple of times to um, get them to be a little firmer. develops a better consistency run through a few times. together. Okay, I'll get back to you when this is this process. Okay, now I have um, put these each through at least three or four times and uh, they're very nice dough here and I'm going to tighten this up just a bit now and 
edge, start pressing it through. As you can see, we've got quite the nice long strip. And that's still a bit on the thick side, but there's that's the first strip through. So what we're going to do is once again, power this on both sides. I'll be using my dining room table very soon. Okay, next one through. all through and until we get them all uh, through this stage. Okay, I've processed them again a second time, as I said, on a, a tighter, so it's stretched at the dough. It's still a little thick for my, I don't like the dough this thick, so we're going to run it through. I think the last time, so I'm going to flour it so it doesn't stick to the machine. Okay, and I'm going to check the setting. Okay, we started off at 5, and if we, or sorry, at 0, and if we didn't, it was close enough to it. Not 0, but 1. And this pass-through was at 5. So it goes up to 7, and 7 is too fine for my purposes, so we're going to Pass it through one more time at six, and that should give us the strips we want. Now these are too long, so I'm going to cut them in half before I pass them through, and then when I do, they'll be this length again. So it'll double the length. Okay, so, and then I will put them on my dining room table to dry out a bit. Don't be afraid to use flour. Okay, that's one. I'm going to put these aside. Okay, and I'm going to do that until these are all pressed out. So cutting them in half, pressing them out, and uh, then we'll get back to you. Okay, I'm done pressing it all out. This is my dining room table where everything is all laid out. Now it's just a matter of which tray are you going to use and how large do you want to cut these pieces. And since it's just my husband and I, I want to cut them into small. I'm going to try and do two serving. Uh, I think my glass bread uh, pans would be ideal. Hang on. Here we are. These uh, glass bread pans would be an ideal for a two-person or two-serving size uh, of lasagnas. So, and I've made these before and then froze them in these containers. So... I am going to try to cut these to where I can layer it in those containers and then I will cut some of this up into linguine. Okay, I've added the attachment to cut linguine and I've cut my strips into approximately a foot long. And we are going to cut linguine with some of the leftovers here. Now these little bundles can be frozen and taken out as, as you want to use them.
So nothing's wasted. Okay, that's it for my machine. It can be cleaned up and put away. And as you can see, we have these nice little bundles here, which I'll just leave to dry for a little while. Actually, I'll just put them on a cookie sheet and on some uh, parchment paper and put them in the freezer to dry just like this. And then they can go in a plastic bag. Okay. So as you can see, I've cut my little strips of pasta for lasagna into quite small pieces and they will probably fit uh, two or so in a tray like that. And if I was putting them in a big tray, there is no way I would cut them this small. But for, for my purposes right now and the way I'm going to make this, I'm better off to cut them uh, before I cook them. A lot easier to handle this size than the larger. So that's it for my pasta making so far. So now to make lasagna we have to make sauce, we have to grate mozzarella cheese, we have to grate parmesan cheese, we have to boil some eggs and grate the eggs and uh, the sauce should be a meat sauce and then we put it all together. So that's it for this portion of it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one.